Hi, this video is going to focus on some of the features that we can see in extrusive igneous rocks. Most of these are characteristic of lava flows. One of them, perhaps not so much, but they're all features that we can commonly find uh, within igneous rocks that can tell us something about how they form. Now we know that extrusive igneous rocks are rocks that are erupted from volcanoes. Clearly the type of volcano, and of course the, the magma that creates that volcano, will have a big effect on the type of extrusive igneous rocks that we see. In this image here you can see uh, a volcano in Hawaii, typically erupting um, very high temperature, very low viscosity, very fluid magma that's mafic in composition uh, and creating fairly extensive basaltic lava flows. This contrasts quite sharply with volcanoes that have a more silicic or silica rich composition. This is a, a Pelean type volcano. You can see the lava being erupted here is very different. It's a different colour for a start, but crucially it's lower temperature and it's much, much higher viscosity. This is a silicic or an intermediate magma. The lava here is hardly flowing anywhere. It's building a large, very unstable lava dome. We need to have a look at some of the features that we can find in some of these lavas, in particular in basaltic lavas. The first of these is Pahoehoe. Now Pahoehoe is a feature we see on the top surface of a lava flow. It's a Hawaiian word uh, and it refers to the this ropey structure that we see uh, in the top of a lava flow. Now I think the best way to explain this is for you to see a Pahoehoe lava flow actually forming. As you can see, it's a feature of quite a fast flowing, quite a fluid, volatile rich lava flow. This contrasts with another Hawaiian type of lava flow. This is called a'a, again a Hawaiian word, that even just by looking at the image you can see flows in a very different way. Again, the best way to see this is to watch a video of how it forms. Whew. Oh brother, that was um, the scariest moment <laughs> during this whole event. So anyways, now you can see what um, we were hearing earlier. Uh, I'm looking up Kaupili, going that way down Kahukai will take us to the pig house and the dog house house. Oh, I'm still shaking a little bit from that explosion, that was something.
Um, this big chunk right there is going to go soon, probably. <clears throat> Man, it's like closing in. Okay, so this piece just fell off. It's solid. Yeah, maybe 40 pounds. So you can tell the huge difference between this plang and pahoy hoy. Man, it's going to take that power pole down pretty soon. So yeah, I'm uh, in a horseshoe. Up Kaupili, down Kahukai. It's just amazing seeing how this stuff advances. You can see that this is a product of a, uh, a much slower, uh, much less fluid lava flow. We can also find uh, a di very distinctive feature from when lava erupts underwater. This creates a feature we call pillow lavas. Watch this video of a pillow lava actually erupting to see how they form. Pillow lavas then create this very distinctive shape. This is a, a cross section of a pillow lava, and it has these distinctive sag features where the pillow has settled down onto the pillow that formed uh, before this one. This makes it an extremely good way up criteria. Around the edge of uh, these pillows as well, we get a chilled margin formed by that very rapid cooling that you saw on the video. Now we can apply this to looking at some pill lavas we find here in Wales. This is uh, a pillow lava found on a place called Llanthwyn Island in Anglesey. This shows us that uh, this part of the crust was once underwater when a volcano was erupting. These are Precambrian age, so it's about 600 million years ago. But we can identify the sags on this pillow, which shows us that this particular pillow lava has been tilted. The right way up there is going off to the right, which means that these pillows have been tilted through about 90 degrees. Now, one of the most distinctive features of igneous rocks, which can be found in both lava flows and also igneous intrusions, is columnar jointing. Some of the most spectacular examples of this can be found on the Giant's Causeway on the north coast of Northern Ireland. 
these beautiful regular columns are formed when lava cools and contracts and, con and it cracks then to create these almost perfect hexagons of the Giant's Causeway. Let's see an explanation of how similar features to this form in America. Two minute geology, two minute geology. Hello, young people. Columnar basalt. Hiking today near Othello, Washington. Look at these columns. They're perfect and 50 feet high. These columns are found in a rock called basalt, which is a lava flow rock. We have them all over eastern Washington, but we can also find columns like this, Devil's Tower in Wyoming, Giant's Causeway in Ireland. We've even found columnar basalt on Mars. Here in eastern Washington, the Ice Age floods came barreling through this country thousands of years ago ripping up a lot of bedrock and exposing these columns. And to figure out why the columns form, how about we actually climb to the top of these columns, walk around up there, see if we can't figure things out. Come on, let's get up there. Each of these is a column. We're up on top of them now. These cracks are 50 feet deep. And these cracks with this beautiful pattern are found all through nature. You go to a drying mud puddle after a thunderstorm and you see cracks like this. You go to the Arctic and you see permafrost with cracks in these shapes. These lavas cooled 10.5 million years ago when the lava came in at 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit and probably cooled over the course of a century. 100 years of cooling, these cracks got established back then. As the lava was cooling, contracting, surfaces shrinking, and the net result, columnar basalt near Othello, Washington. It's all out here to see The coolies, rocks, and canyons is scenery Right here for you and me. Two minutes. Okay, to conclude then, we can see features in igneous rocks that are a product of how they are formed. In particular, how they're crystallizing. These can be uh, very indicative of how these form and give us some clues about the processes involved. Now don't forget to come up with your interesting question and bring it along to class. I'll see you then.